I'm just gonna fucking start. I swear to there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That's right. No fucks given radio. I am the unknown factor. But tonight, for the most part, frankly, I'm gonna shut the fuck up. Which, oh my god, it's kind of, it's kind of nice. Oh shit, though. Let's see, see, that's a, okay. So we need to do this real quick. I thought that was right, but apparently, no, don't tell me you can't hear me. You should be able to, oh, well, no, you shouldn't be able to hear me, asshole. Don't fuck with me. See, Sorry. she's fucking with me because fucking, she can't hear me because it's set up, whatever. You can hear me because you're in the room. You don't need to hear me. If you want to hear me on the, here, 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 put that one on. Put that one on. Put that on. Look, now she can fucking hear me. Oh, my God, she's giving me a motherfucking headache, ladies and gentlemen, but. So am I. I just took Night Quill as well. But that's besides the point, ladies and gentlemen. As I said, this is no fuck skipping radio. I am the unknown factor. But again, for the most part, I'm going to shut the fuck up tonight. Because tonight is three chicks, one prick. Man, I ain't a host on that shit. Thank God. I mean, not really. I mean, I'm down with it. But whatever. But let's get that shit on the road. Right? So if you want to catch everything, like fucking all the facts and everything that are played, just to let you know, go ahead and go over to nofucksgivenradio.com. <laughs> um, you'll just hear the interview portion here. And ladies and gentlemen, if I cut to a track, it's going to cut the picture for y'all, just so you know. But for now, humanity. Uh, babe, hold on. See, I, I didn't, I didn't I stop me. I got to stop that shit. Stop me. Start me. And humanity. Take that shit. Hey, what's up? We are on Three Chicks, One Frick. We just started. This is the second intro of the show. My name is Cameron versus Humanity. I'm joined by Shell Shell as always, and we have a new host today. Um, we don't need to talk about the other two that we don't have, but we can talk about this one. Um, our new host is Guardian Angel from the Rest in Peace Soldiers, uh, based out of, um, where are you, Belfouche, South Dakota? Yep, Belfouche, South Dakota. And for Belfouche, people that don't know, <laughs> yeah, what's that close to? Anything? Um. Yeah, actually, it's it, we are pretty close to both Sturgis and Deadwood. We're kind of in the in between. It's it's pretty nice actually because there's a lot of back roads, so you don't have to take the interstate every time. There's some back roads that can lead you straight into Deadwood from Belfouche or straight to Sturgis. Hell yeah, nice. that is dope. Everybody knows how much I love Sturgis. <laughs> um, Another funny thing about Jenica is when I met Jenica, or I, when I'm, I'm sorry, when I met Guardian Angel, neither one of us were rappers. We were uh, theater kids, and then, uh, what's it been, like seven, eight years, somewhere down the road later, we both became rappers, and now we're doing a show on sex together. So it should be a little funny because there's a different dynamic here that Jenica and I have that I probably couldn't have with anybody else in the fucking world definitely. for that matter. <laughs> definitely a but, different dynamic. But we have her, and then our guest tonight is Shauna Lene. Shauna Lene is an American pornographic actress. Um, she has also uh, starred in a movie called Half Moon, which has terrible reviews on the internet. We'll talk <laughs> about that a little bit later. Um, but according to what Shell Shell just told me in my ear, um, our guest started doing pornography in high school. At the age of 18, is that right, Shauna? Yes, that is correct. I was 18 and like four days old when I made my first movie. Okay, so I can I can relate to this a little bit on like the money end of it. You know, is it because you didn't want to work like a nine to five job? You didn't want to go do the McDonald's or waiting tables thing, or how did no, you get had, started in pornography at such a young age? I had a full time job actually working at Panera Bread. So it wasn't that. It was that that job didn't pay enough bills because I had a son to take care of. So I needed to make more money to support um, the things that needed to be paid. Okay. So you already had a kid young, and you were going to high school, and you were working, and there were just no other options. So you said, you got to do porn? I was taking mainstream modeling and acting classes. I was traveling to New York City. I was doing monologue competitions. However, Disney, Nickelodeon, like, they wouldn't sign me because I was a teen mom. So basically, my options in acting and modeling were very limited, so that is how I ended up in the adult modeling world. That's awesome. Wow. That's really It kind of worked out. I'm happy how it worked out. I'm very thankful. So where did you grow up? Are you an L.A. kid or are you? 
I grew up uh, about 20 minutes from Cleveland, and I still live um, almost, I live right next door to the city I grew up in. It's actually a little teeny place that no one's heard of. So I live exactly where I grew up. I did move to L.A. for five years. I moved back in 2010. I really enjoy being home around. I'm friends with a lot of my childhood friends still, and I love being close to my family. Well, that's awesome. Yeah, I dude, love that's Cleveland. Really... Yeah, Cleveland sounds awesome. I've only been to Cleveland once, and it was uh, driving through it, trying a uh... – yeah, that's a different story. But if, uh, you know, a lot of our listeners don't know who you are, a lot of our listeners don't even know who I am, so if um, you were to introduce yourself as an artist to somebody that has no idea who you are, um, how, would you, how would you introduce yourself, you know, publicly without censorship? So, hi, my name's Cameron. What's your name? And what do you do? Um, hi, my name is Shauna Lene, and I have a few jobs. I've been web designing since I was 14, so I learned how to make money online very quickly. I found the adult industry at 18. Um, I became a porn star, and that lasted for a while. However, the industry has changed, and now I'm a full-time cam girl. And I also have some side businesses online, and I love to do social marketing as well. Okay. So okay. you're a cam girl? Right, yes. Right, right yes. now, that's what you do? Okay, sure. that's cool, because Shell Shell does all our booking, and with our last couple guests, I can totally tell what her fetishes are now. <laughs> 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 I love camming. I love it. I think it's, it worked for my life being a single mom. I'm now a mom of two. Um, I don't like to travel away from the kids very often. I get to work whenever I want. I make a great amount per hour, so I only have to work about 10 hours a week. And my, mm. my schedule is completely open for my kids. So it really allows me to be an even better mom to be a cam model because I am here for my kids. That's, no, that's really you, cool. That sounds like a dream. It really is. It, it is. I'm very lucky. How do you juggle both worlds? Like, how do you explain what you do to your kids, or do you think, like, when the, when the conversation comes up? Um, my son is 13. Uh, he knows what I do. Um, by the time a kid is 14 years old, 94% of kids have seen pornography on the Internet. So I thought that 12-year-old was a good age to tell him. Um, and I explained to him, I make adult content. It's only for adults. Um, if you and I, we have parental blocks in my house, so my kids don't really use the internet or tablets um, without me monitoring them. And it's all about responsibility. Like you can't just let your kids on a computer in their room with the door shut and just let them like free into the world. I'm like oh. against that. Like monitor your kids kids internet time. But I explain age appropriately. My six-year-old knows I model lingerie and bikinis. She doesn't know I model nude. My son knows that I make adult content. It's not for people his age, but I also let it into a conversation where it's done responsibly so that when in a few more years I can have a conversation about, him, about it with him again and how to be responsible about um, his actions that he'll probably be doing. You know, that's, that's really cool because a lot of parents are afraid to approach the discussion at all. And I, I personally feel like it causes conflict in society when, when we're so repressed and nobody wants to talk about sex. And so I think that that's really, really neat that how, how you're able to be open and still, still be the leading influence in your kid's life. That's pretty impressive. It helped me because I felt for a long time I was hiding something from my son. And now it's like now there's no secret about it. Now he doesn't wonder, like, why does my mom go to these weird expos like five times a year? Like, what are these things? She just leaves for a weekend because I go to all the adult expos. So now he knows I go there, I, I meet fans, I sign autographs. And um, so now there's no secrets, and I feel like our relationship is even better because I don't really have anything to hide from him. Well, and it's really cool, too, because then you get to share some of the, the really neat parts about your online online profile. I saw that you had um, been given a United States flag by some deployed military members. Or I have, yes. It's right here, actually. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I have it right next to my bed. Would you want to tell us a little bit about that? So I, I get a lot of letters from, like, deployed troops, and it, it really makes me feel special because they have me all on their hard drives they take, and I'm, they think about me while they're over there. 
And basically, I was given this flag, like, basically for my freedom of expression to do what I want. And they're fighting for me to be able to be a cam girl and an adult model. So this flag means so much to me. Um, and I definitely need to get it framed. I don't have a frame yet. I want to put it, like, right up in my house. I keep it nice and folded and very clean and in a very safe spot. I look at it all the time. And it really meant a lot to me to be sent that because, I mean, I never even imagined getting a flag from a deployed troop. Well, let lets you know that you're probably making their time a little bit easier. Yes, definitely. I get a lot of a lot of messages from people, from guys that are deployed and, you know, just chatting with them or writing them something. It really just brightens their day. So cause I couldn't imagine um, being away from my family and my friends. And just even making somebody smile really makes me feel good. That is crazy. I never thought I'd ever interview a porn star and have the interview start with, I love my children and I love America, and that's why I do this. Like. <laughs> that, just, that just kind of blew my mind. Um, I, want, I want to ask you a question. Uh, speaking of your children, um, mm -hmm. I know being in the uh, 420 community and the weed legalization movement and everything like that, uh, DFS, Child Protective Services, everything, constantly up my ass. And I've had um, a lot of issues in that field just because of um, the the stigma of the community I'm involved in. Have mm -hmm. you ever had any issues like that with, you know, being in the adult industry? Has anybody, any government forces or uh, shitty ex-mother-in-law or anything like that ever come and tried to use your uh, your modeling career to fuck up your family? I have been very lucky. Um, I have two different fathers and my children, and they... Um, one is very supportive of my career. One just, I don't think he really cares either way. But none of them have tried to use it against me. We have great co-parenting relationships. It's something that I take great pride in. I don't have drama with my exes. I don't fight over the kids. Whenever, whenever they want the kids, they just come get them. Um, if I need help, they'll be here in 20 minutes. And we just have a great relationship where we can work together and there's no arguments and there's no competitiveness. Uh, sometimes I think it gets competitive over gifts at Christmas over who is, who's going to get them what. Um, but other than that, I've been extremely lucky and I, I couldn't be more grateful because they could probably try to mess up my life, but they really don't. And they really, I think they more support me than want to be against me. That is really cool. You are really lucky. I am. <laughs> I am. That is a lot of work, but that's that's a definite level of achievement that not many people can. That's not not many people can say. <laughs> yeah, to not have the drama it makes my life a lot easier and a lot less stressful than I know a lot of people go through. So I I'm so appreciative of their fathers. I. I wish I could tell them every single day, but I feel like that would be creepy, so I don't. And so you sound like an amazing parent. You sound like you support the troops, the America all day. How much time do you spend volunteering at church? <laughs> <laughs> I'm an atheist, so no church for me. Uh, church is very awkward for me. Um, Fair enough. I, I like to take a part in the community. That was a joke. <laughs> Yeah, no, I like, I'm definitely atheist, so I don't believe in anything supernatural. Um, but I do like to be, take a part in my community. I volunteer at the school. I'm part of uh, PTA. I take my daughter to the Performing Arts Center and try to help them as much as possible. So I just try to be active. And then I put together fundraisers a couple times a year, which I do need to do another one for the Women and Children's Shelter here in Lorain County, Ohio. But real quick, real quick. You said nothing supernatural like yes nothing, nothing. no ghost I'm, spirit evil okay well i guess that whole halloween portion of the show we were going to do with her is out the window now <laughs> 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 no just kidding but um speaking of nothing supernatural you were in a horror movie I um, was, yeah. According I, to I, Google, I, it has a 3.3 out of 10 stars IMDb rating. 
Um, I've never heard of this movie. It's probably something that Elliot Montgomery or Elmo 415 on the Freaky Fucked Up Fear Hour would know about, but I am not familiar with Half Moon. Can you tell us kind of what this movie's about and how you got Um, involved with it? And I don't really know what it's about. I've never seen it. Um, I just know that I played like in the very opening of it as a dead hooker because I'm always casted for either the stripper or the dead hooker in mainstream movies because most mainstream actresses don't want to take on those roles because if they're nude, they feel like that will hurt their career. So basically, I'm one of the girls or type of girls that they come to and say, hey, will you pretend to be a dead naked hooker? So they put bruises on me and I just lay there. And that's the type of roles that I usually get in um, like TV shows or, or movies. And that's all I know of the movie is that I played a dead hooker. I actually have not seen it. Um, I had gotten involved with it because one of my friends um, helped direct the movie. So it was, I didn't really work for it. We're going to have to get Guardian Angel and EPK together because I know she's down to play a dead hooker any day of the week. <laughs> you know, you can just be dead hooker extraordinaire and your whole electronic press kit can just be how we can dress you up around your trailer park and make you look like a dead hooker. <laughs> and we're going to make a million dollars, and I'm your agent. I'd scare so I get some people 10%. around this place. That would scare some people around this place. <laughs> no. Yeah, I, I, I think you would make an excellent dead hooker, guardian angel. Well, thank you. You know what? It's I've been waiting for someone to say that for a long time. So. Yeah, that nice you would make a great dead it. hooker, or that yeah, that I would make a great dead hooker. It's, it's oh, a dream. I'm, yeah, I it's mean, hard to look here, dead. I mean, you want to move, you want to breathe, and like you can't. Oh, definitely, it's so it's, lifeless. And for long periods of time, you have to hold it too. So if you're in any uncomfortable position, sometimes body parts probably start going numb. And yes, definitely. So would, have you ever been asked or have you ever considered trying to uh, fulfill a role on something like Law & Order? Um, I had, no, I was going to be casted for like an almost software movie. Um, it was produced by one of the major movie companies. Um, and I had the role, but the casting director wanted me to go out in a few dates with him, and I said no. I lost the role, and the whole scene was deleted out of the movie. Oh. This, this was back hard. in like 2008, I would believe, 2007, 2008. So how many times have you run into that where, you know, you, you audition for a role or you, you know, you have a potential or at least pro- or, or even promising opportunity in front of you, but the people in charge try to make it contingent on, oh, I see on your resume you're a porn star. Like, you fuck me, you get this role, or you date me, you get this role, or, that you know, how, how often do you get, that's only once? I had never wanted in mainstream ever again, ever again. That was, I didn't want, I don't want, I didn't want roles for that reason, and I had never tried to pursue it ever again. Like, I was just like, eh, not interested. If that's how it's going to be, then that's not where I want to be. So how old were you when you gave up on the the mainstream acting idea completely? Um, completely, probably about 21. Uh, it was by, by the time I was 21. I was still fairly young. Okay, I was so you had about, about three years, you know, kind of in limbo, you know, trying to make it as an actress but doing the porn thing before you said, fuck it, I'm a porn star. Um, it wasn't really a priority. I think right away I just wanted in the adult industry because basically my parents had put me through modeling and acting school, and they had spent thousand, like ten thousand dollars, to put me through this school. And it's just really what I wanted to do. I wanted to model and I wanted to act. So all I wanted, I loved. My main goal when I started the adult industry was to be in magazines. That was, I was like, I just want to be in magazines. I want to be on magazine covers and. I had completed that. I w- I'm so proud of myself because I became Penthouse Pet of the Year runner-up, and I had two covers. I had a Hustler, excuse me, cover. So I was excited. Like, I had reached those goals. Um, you had two covers from Penthouse? Yes. <laughs> That's fucking true. My, my first cover of Penthouse and my first Hustler cover 
were actually came out at the same time. So at the newsstand, what? it was so cool because I had two huge covers, and I think I was the only girl that ever happened to, and it was really just random. But um, so it was just a really cool time in my life to model and be on set for 14 hours modeling with hair and makeup and beautiful outfits and settings, and it was really a dream come true. Wow. That's really cool. You're, That's impressive. You're part, yeah. I, oh, I'm so already when, impressed. When did you, when, what was the moment when you realized that, that you were successful in the industry? Like, what, when, when was the aha moment? Uh, when did it become oh, real? Not too long ago. Probably, like, way after this was all happening. Um, probably when I came back into the industry, because I had left for a few years when I had my daughter. And it wasn't until, like, I came back in in 2000, the end of 2014, that I had realized how much I had actually succeeded. I, it it really didn't occur to me at the time. I was, I've I've never felt like special. I just felt like a girl trying to like work on my dreams. Um, so it really never occurred to me at the time. I just went on living like I was just Sean. And then when I started getting noticed, and I would sit at a bar, and a guy would be like, "You look like Shauna." And I'd say, I am Shauna, and I'd have to pull out my ID to prove it because Shauna is my real name. And it just started clicking. <clears throat> like I get recognized everywhere. And then I started realizing how many times I've been viewed on the Internet, like billions and billions and billions of times. So I think gradually it happened. I don't know if there was a aha moment all at once. You use your real name in porn? Yes. I I don't like to hide what I do, so basically everyone knows what I do. It's no secret. Um, I'm actually very lucky to have such overwhelming support from my family and my friends. I have a great support system. Wow. <laughs> I, <laughs> dude, you that just blew my mind. Um, you're fucking cool. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, so, uh, you said you go to a lot of the, um, I want to say expositions because I'm smoking a blunt. Expos. Okay, yeah, yeah. expositions. That's just the, that's just the long word for it. <laughs> so, you, you go to a lot of expos and, um, you said you go to about five a year. Um, uh, when you're at those expos, what are you doing, like, specifically there? I, I, I mean, obviously you know. networking and trying to meet people and, uh, build right. your brand, but like I used to go and sign for eight hours a day, but then I started hating it because it would be the same people at every expo, and I didn't really feel like that was helping. Like I could make money doing it, but it wasn't really helping me build my brand. So yeah. I have stopped within the past year. I've stopped signing, and now I go to network and meet business owners. People meet people working there and representing businesses. So I'm having business meetings now when I'm there and trying to work out deals, partnerships, whatever I can to help further my brand and to see where the industry is going. And I kind of am a gossip queen, so I'm always kind of getting in little circles and trying to find out who is doing what. I'm not. I don't really gossip, but I like to know what everybody else is doing because I feel like inside information is very important. So I stopped signing, and I've donated all that time to meeting new people and networking. I feel that. Um, on our last episode, uh, we had our guests, uh, uh, the Ninja Stars, uh, Kitty and Lucky, um, who we have since befriended, and they go to a lot of those expos as well. Uh, do you know them? Like, is that, yeah. that tight knit a community? Okay, so you know them. Yes, I know them. I actually was just texting. Actually, no, I owe them a text. They texted me last night, and I still have not texted them back. I'm like a terrible friend. Um, but I do know well, them. Tell we them met no at Expos. Radio loves them. Cool. <laughs> yes. Well, we met at Expos Miami. Uh, we were both nominated for different categories of awards, and I was voting for them, and we kind of became friends on Twitter, and then we met at the um, event, and then we had – Stayed in touch, and I had met them again in, I don't know, all these expos just blurred together, um, like Chicago, I believe. Yeah, Chicago, we had met up again. So I love them very much. They are amazing. I love them. 
Yeah, I didn't get to be a part of that last interview, but I listened to it, and they seemed like really, really cool people to get to know for sure. Really yeah, I mean, there's some people in the industry that are more fake personalities, and they'll tell everybody what they want to hear just to kind of get some social media. Um, is Shauna cutting out a little bit? Yeah. You hear me? Yeah. Yeah, okay. I'm, I was trying to listen to see. Sorry, I, I'm having a hard time hearing you. Oh, okay. Um, hold on. Oh, can no, there you are. Yeah, okay. we, can hear you now. we can hear you good now. Oh, sorry. Oh, no, it's okay. It's, no worries. It's okay. It happens when you, uh, you doing to your put a whole bunch of cell phones together and stream it through a website. There's a lot of stuff going on here. But no worries. Um, so yeah, you're like so you use your real name in porn. You are a great mom that loves her country, that is not an atheist, but does more for the community than your average church or is an atheist, but does more for the community than your average churchgoer. Um, what sucks about you? Like, give us something bad. <laughs> because you just sound like the coolest person in the world right now. You're like porn star female Jesus. So, I mean, like, there's some stuff that sucks about me. Like, uh, you know, I went through a really bad, like, breakup of, about, like, almost about three months ago. And that sucks because it was publicly and it was on Twitter. And the person moved on basically, like, the next day and, like, canning with all these people now so you know that that has been something that's majorly sucked in my life to be in a public relationship and to just be broken up with and now they're with the new people that that is something that's really hurt me in life where for the first time ever I had said I I would totally give up being famous if I never have to experience that ever again because having a public relationship um, it was great. It was great, but having a breakup publicly was probably one of the worst things to ever happen to me. Well, then wasn't yeah. he? Wasn't he being pretty awful to you too online? I, I remember um, looking through your profile a little bit, and there was I saw some stuff about you getting pressured from him. Yeah, I prefer not to speak about that, like on a recording. But yes, uh, there has been a lot of things that have happened since the breakup, um, a lot of offers to hurt me from other cam guys um, in return for his fame. Um, so it's been, it's been interesting how it's like I just want to move on and I, ha I feel like the other person won't really let me move on, like just let me, let me go, you're in your own thing now. Now, I every time I talk, try to talk to a new guy, he calls the new guy and says, we have a problem. So wow. I don't appreciate that, but that, that's kind of what sucks being in a public relationship and saying one tweet to a guy can open up the door to everybody knows who you're talking to. Well, so, from, what it, from what it looked like to me, it looked like you were using that experience to really be positive. I. I actually ha had a really good time looking through the different updates and stuff that you had to offer. You're always so positive. So I thought that that was pretty impressive. Oh, I really appreciate that because really, I mean, it, honestly speaking, I was in bed for two months crying. So I feel like trying to appear positive was probably one of the things that helped me. Um, I mean, there was there was a time when, you know, I found out so much within an hour, like, oh, hey, I'm seeing somebody else and I'm breaking up with you and, like, I never want to talk to you again. I'm getting my life back. When everything had gone up to that point totally normal, it was just so unexpected to me, I didn't know what the hell to fucking do. Like, my whole life had just stopped. And I, I spent two months – I hate saying this because I think it gives him satisfaction, but it's the truth. I spent two months crying in my bed. Two months. Oh. <laughs> but I'm okay. I'm getting better now. I have I have some projects I'm working on. So that has been helping me get myself back. And without these 
just to have a different focus now, um, something to help me feel like I, I'm useful again. And I'm working on some really cool things that I can't say yet, but if everybody could tune into my Twitter in a few weeks, hopefully all the announcements will be made. Uh, just real quick, everybody, what's your, keep an eye out. Yeah, what's your Twitter handle and all your social media, if you want to drop that real quick and get a quick plug in? All my social media is Shauna Linnae Show. Um, basically, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, Shauna Linnae Show, S-H-A-W-N-A-L-E-N-E-E, S-H-O-W, Shauna Linnae Show. Bet. Awesome. Go follow Shauna Linnae Show, all you no fucks givings. That's, <laughs> that's what I'm calling our fan base now, no fucks givings. Michigan weed like is really that. good. Wait, bro, bro, I <laughs> really, no fucks givings. I really, I really like that, humanity. We, did we, might did, just did we just right coin right. something? Yeah, I don't know. I'm good with it. If everybody out there listening is, we'll see if it fucking picks up or not. Yeah, if you hate no fucks Gibbons, fucking let us know. Um, But yeah, that's badass as fuck. Um, Yeah, my mind is so blown. I'm kind of wondering what I should ask you next. Uh, So you said you can't talk about these projects, but aside from uh, being in the adult industry, um, you know, we know you want you you started doing the uh, traditional, you know, acting, modeling, trying to get into film and TV and stuff like that. But um, like, what what else do you do? Like, what are, do you like to play tennis or um, are you can you draw? You know, what do you do for fun? You um, know, that's... I go out to eat and I web design. So that my web designing is my creative little thing that I do, like my art. And I crochet sometimes, but I want to get back to it. I haven't had much time. So those are my arts. For fun, I go to the expo. Those those are my fun. I only go out five times a year to the expos, and that's where I have my five glasses of wine, and that's my fun. Wow. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So have you ever thought of doing, like, crochet bomb art? Have you ever heard of that, crochet artist? Um, um, I actually have seen that, and I, I love that stuff. I've, I've thought about it. I, I sure have. <laughs> I haven't done it yet, but it, it has crossed my mind. Oh, oh wait, my grandmother wait. taught me how to crochet oh. when I was little. That's uh, tough. Uh, Wait, I heard crochet bomb something. What the? Right. You cannot just say that and then someone not. I don't really even give a fuck who explains it. But what the fuck is so that when you, shit? When you crochet bomb, you do like a parking meter or a tree at a public place and you wrap your crochet like around it. So like you would crochet and, or sew like a blanket around the tree or the parking meter to dress it up. Like a spray paint artist, but with crocheted artwork. It's very right. cool. Like you graffiti with, with crochet. Yeah. That sounds so fun. <laughs> it's a real thing. <laughs> I know that I would never be able to accomplish that, but. I, I don't know if I could, I would, I don't know. I would try. I know I could do it if I, I could, ha- I could design it, but I don't know if I could go out there and actually put it up there. We, we no. Make no fucks given radio crochet things to put on parking <laughs> That's the most innocent form of vandalism I've ever heard of. Uh, <laughs> it's sure. There is. Like, there, is there is an epidemic in our city. Somebody keeps crocheting our fucking parking meters. <laughs> <laughs> and it won't stop. <laughs> we take them all down and new ones pop right back up. <laughs> That sounds about right. That's, that sounds exactly how it would happen, too. This city is going to a nursing home. <laughs> I started crocheting because my grandma, who had passed away uh, from cancer when I was 13, had taught me. And basically, it's like my way of being very personal, um, remembering her and not forgetting her. And I became like a master crocheter. Like, I'm actually really really good and I actually sell crochet patterns online somewhere on Craftsy and stuff and I get five dollars in my PayPal every so often um so I've so designed cool. like yeah I've designed dishcloth patterns and blanket patterns and 
I've actually, I was actually making a good part-time income when I was out of the adult industry and I was a stay-at-home mom. And my crochet business actually is what taught me social media marketing. And when I came back into the industry, I took all those social media marketing of building an online brand for crochet and I switched it to making me my product. And all of my tips and skills have really worked off in the past three years. Wow. So crochet is a big part of my life. It's really it's really weird. Of all things. That's dope. That's like the perfect answer that I could have gotten to that question. It actually helped me go it, my crochet business is why I went to school for entrepreneurship. It led me to who I am today. It's just the weirdest thing. That is yeah, the crocheting Beautiful. a lot of people don't know how much dexterity and skill actually it actually takes. That's yeah, they look at a pattern and it's a completely different language to them. Like they they it's it's definitely you have to know the crochet language. Yeah. I used to teach too at, at um like at the craft store. I used to teach part time as well when I was gone from the adult industry. So I would have two classes a week and I would teach people how to crochet, but I don't know if I was that good at teaching people. Sometimes at expos I'll have girls come up to me and they'll ask me like crochet questions and they'll be like, hey, can you show me this double crochet stitch? I just can't get it. And I'll teach them. And then a year later, they'll bring me like something they made. I always that's thought that cool. was really cool. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. Come out with your own line of, of wear, <laughs> crocheted clothing, bustiers and such. <laughs> I do miss doing craft shows. I'm like an old lady at heart for sure. Like, I'm getting there. I'm in bed at 9 every night. I I crocheted. I'm getting old here. Mm. Okay, so then what was the craziest thing that you've done in your career? Um, I try not to do crazy things. Um, I don't know. I just have, like, this sense of, like, I hate doing crazy stuff. I'm just not into the shock value stuff and where the industry is gone. Um, it's just why I don't shoot anymore. It's just not my style. So I just feel like I haven't really done that much crazy stuff. I guess some people would probably say some things I went, I did crazy, but I had such strict rules, like no animal masks, no, no anything. The craziest thing to me I ever did was my one anal scene. So to me that was crazy because I, I wish I never did it. Um, because once you do it, people just bother you for it all the time. So mm -hmm. to me, that's the craziest thing I did because I really went against all my rules for that scene. Yeah, and well, sometimes you end up with a stigma that you don't weren't really expecting or didn't want. Yes, yeah. Once you go there, I mean, I mean, the scene happened ten years ago, and people expect like that I should be doing it every day. But it's like I did it once 10 years ago. It really is not a part of my brand much at all. But, yeah, once you do something in the adult industry, you can't go back because I, I tell girls this in cam modeling all the time. If, if they don't want to stay solo and they start working with a guy on cam, their viewers are going to expect that. So it's better just to stay solo and make money that way, or else if you don't have your boyfriend in a year, you, <clears throat> you're still you're going to lose money because that's what your viewers are going to expect. That's I've been very really lucky. Good yeah, I've been very lucky to switch from a boy girl performer to a solo girl, um, and I have my fans to thank for that for all the support they've given me. Yeah. But I so, still get asked every day, when are you going to have a guy on cam? When are you going to have a guy on cam? And I'm like, I'm not, I don't even have any sexual partners. I'm not going to have a guy on cam. So, um, you know, we've talked about what you won't see if you tune in to your webcam show. <laughs> um, if our <laughs> listeners tune in and see you, mm -hmm. what do you want your brand to represent and what should, you know, be expected out of you and what are you putting on the table and what, you know, what are you selling? 
Well, it is called the Charles and A Show. So basically, it's my personality mixed with a little bit of views. On my cam show, I try to stay away from religious and public or political speeches. That's safe for my Twitter. I have a lot of debates and stuff on my Twitter. But in my cam room, I don't want anybody offended in my cam room, so we stay away from those topics. And basically, it just focuses on me, my life, the things I like to do, the poses I love to do. I do get naked. I do sh solo shows. And it's just us basically having fun, and my members basically take the show where they want it. Um, there's some days where I don't even take off my top, and we're just talking. And then there's some days where we just do a whole show. So it really depends who's in my room. I, I'm getting a whole camp studio done, up, um, so that's in the works. Uh, we're going to have lights everywhere. I have a lot of lights where I cam now. So last night we had everything was blue and white lights, and it was really kind of blue moody. It was a really cool visual scene. So I really am more into, like, erotic, uh, uh, sensual, and romantic. Like, that. those are the three things that you'll find in my shows. Nice. Sounds almost like you, you give therapy. It's almost like a therapy session for for the, the supporters. Yeah, I really try to make it personal to them. Um, and and nobody, nobody is allowed to be rude or, like, degrade and talk in my room. They get banned right away. Like, if, if they call a girl a bitch or a slut or anything, like, they are just gone. Like, you can't come into my room and talk to me like that. I have no patience for being talked to that way. So we really, I really advocate, like, respecting women. Like, some girls are okay with being called that, but you can't just expect a girl to be okay with being called that. So I really try to teach the guys I talk to, hey, we don't like to be talked to like that. Um, it's going to work out negatively in your favor instead of positively. I try to do what I can to make the world a better place with what I'm doing. I don't know you were such helped. an impressive individual. I will definitely say that. It was, I tried to look stuff up to, in order to get kind of a feel for who you are and your personality, and you are you are a very impressive person. Oh, thank you. That means so much to me. I feel like I'm always failing, so I'm always trying to do myself better. Like, I'm in a competition with myself, like, because I know what it's like to be unhappy. There's been a few times in my life where I've been so unhappy. Um... So I just really try to, and I feel so lucky, like I have a house and I have a car and I'm 30 and I'm a single mom and I'm just so lucky to have what I have because I know so many single moms out there struggle and they don't have support from their uh, kids' fathers and I just, I know how lucky I am. So that's what makes me truly happy. You're a friggin' superwoman. I think uh, Guardian Angel just found her new favorite porn star. <laughs> well, you know. Wow. Yeah. Um, so uh, you were talking about other girls, and you are talking about teaching crochet classes and giving advice. Have you ever had, like, a porno prodigy? Like, have you ever, you know, had somebody that comes to you for all the advice in their career or that you've taught or that you've, you know, guided? Or Every day. Every day, I have girls messaging me, um, hey, how do I do this? Um, what do you use to make your graphics? I never tell anybody what programs I use because that would be giving away trade secrets. Um, but I do give advice to some girl, whether I know them or I don't know them, every single day. And I actually have this tendency to go on lectures. Like, I will go on an hour rant, not rant, but a lecture definitely about paying attention to your stats and knowing where your customers are coming from. If they're coming from Twitter, promote there. If they're coming from Instagram, promote there. And I try to teach the girls that statistics are everything. So your data, always pay attention to your data, how much you're making per hour, when during the week you're going to make the most money. If you're not making money on a Monday morning, there's no use to go on, on a Monday morning. And if you make money on a Monday night, don't go on in the morning. Just save your show till the night. So I'm always teaching um, girls business skills, basically, that they don't learn because we don't have these classes. And everything I've learned 
has basically been through trial and error. I've had to fail so many times before I realized what works. And I love helping these girls. A lot of them are single moms or girls that have never been in the adult industry before. And I teach them how to work from home so they can afford diapers and food for their kids. Even if they're just making an extra $50, $100 a week, it helps them a lot. And it really makes me feel self-fulfilled just to be helping somebody that deserves to be helped and who wants to put the work in. Because if you don't put the work in, you're not going to get anywhere. But if you have a great work ethic, things could really work out in your favor as a cam girl. So every day, and I do have protégés. Um, one of them works a full-time uh, business job, um, like over full-time every week. But she still cams part-time, and she puts all the effort into it. And she's making a great income per hour now during her part-time camming. Oh. Wow. Wow. I'm very proud of her. <laughs> Sounds like there's a reason. It does. It, it, in any kind of a media-based industry, I guess, it takes a lot of hard work and dedication. Do you feel Do you feel like um, your industry is oversaturated at all, or how do you, yeah. what do you think? I think so. I think definitely the film side it is, um, which is one reason I don't have much interest in it, because you know, rates are, like, pretty, not really low, but they haven't really gone up since 2010. So by the time we pay taxes, our agent fee, our testing fee, my travel expenses of flight, hotel, food, there's half of my paycheck. So I could make the same amount in my bedroom than I would going to a set. And I try to explain this to girls, too, all the time, that they want to start making movies, but... The paycheck looks nice, but they don't realize how much they need to pay out of that paycheck, and you're making the same amount of money if you just worked full time from home. And you can, I think, cam girls are more successful now than porn girls. Their followings are bigger, and they're getting more engagements on Twitter, um, and they have more of a, a fan base because they're more interactive with their customers and. You're cutting out just a little bit. Oh. Sorry. How about now? Yep, I can hear you. Sam? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, we're good. Um, wow. So, yeah, it's just wow. Um, I am getting just lost in this interview because I am not expecting any of your answers to be the answers that I would expect to get from you. <laughs> um, I get that a lot. I um, People usually think I'm stuck up, or I got saying you think, but a lot of people tell me, like, I thought you were going to be stuck up, and no, I, I really I really don't think I am. Unless, I probably have a couple enemies that I don't like, but everybody does, so that's okay. That's actually really surprising <laughs> to me, because the personality that you convey in in your social media posts and everything is so bright and outgoing. So that that's really surprising that anyone would, would expect you to be stuck up. Uh, I just don't like some certain racist girls who have made their brand about being racist. I just don't agree with it, and I think it's terrible. And I've spoken out about that in the past. And basically that's about it. Um, unless so the only two types of people I have are people who judge people by their skin color and also people who use their religion to bash other people. Those are the two people I really just don't, two, two types of people I don't like. I might have to, to agree with you right there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, fuck yeah. Fuck yeah, fuck yeah, fuck yeah. Just a whole bunch of fuck yeah. Um, oh, wait, but hey, <laughs> I'm very curious. Someone who has based their brand on being racist, Sean, what, like, and they're, they do cam? Um, on cam and in movies, um, they'll take pictures with their Confederate flags. They will write tweets um, that are just terrible, and their followers just eat it up. <laughs> and they'll write blog posts of why they don't like black people, and it's just, terrible 
stuff. And they think, I mean, in their head, they think it's totally fine, but it's really not. So <laughs> to me, in. it's not okay. Huh. Um, so just, just and that's how nuts. they built their brand. But And their followers, they really do, they endorse it. So they feel like that's their brand. <sighs> Yeah, yeah, just yeah. the cons. I just had to touch on that because I'm like, really, for someone to build any kind of, like, cam or anything like that, and it's, that that's just weird to me, but proceed, y'all, and fuck those cons. Yeah, oh, man, my daughter just wrote me a note and slipped it on the door. It says, I love you so, 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 so much, Mommy. That was just a good thing. Aww. <laughs> Your daughter's so I thought so it was nice. too cute. <laughs> I think she misses me. <laughs> oh my goodness so um are you know you seem to have your values and your morals and everything is there anybody in the industry complimentary to you that you endorse that you really like because they have a certain stance on something or anything like that um i love mercedes she is amazing she's an adult film star and she's she stands up for what she believes in. I honestly have more respect for the girls that stand up for what they believe in than the people who are just like, oh, just ignore it. It's totally fine. I don't think it's fine that people are terrible people. I just, I can't ignore it. I'm not, I'm not that type. And there are some girls who tell me, why do you debate with people over this stuff? And because I feel like it's, important and if I was quiet I wouldn't be able to feel good about myself um, one of my best friends is Teal Harper um, Teal underscore Harper on Twitter and she she's such an amazing person like whenever I need her she is there no matter how sad I am she doesn't judge me and she's just such a loving person that she's like my best friend in the whole world and I can't wait to see her in two weeks at Exotica in Jersey. She'll be with me all weekend, and I'm really looking forward to it. But she, is, she means so much to me. She's just such an amazing person. And awesome. I'm trying wow. to think of somebody else, but I'm really in my own little world, <laughs> always yeah. speaking about something. So basically I'm just in my own little world half the time. Lynn, uh, you know, you're, you're going to Exotica in Jersey in a couple months. Outside of your services, what are the things that you like to do there for you? You know what I mean? Like, what are the things you like to see? What are the things, you know, I don't know if they have, like, games or something. But you know what I mean? Like, what? how do you like to go enjoy yourself at the festivals instead of, um, you know, fulfilling dreams of other people to meet you? Um, the coolest thing for me is to see, one, one what toys are coming out, like all the coolest, latest gadgets, because I love my toys. So seeing what the newest toys are is what I probably look forward to most. And second is I just love seeing everybody that I don't get to see because we're Twitter friends. So I love meeting my friends that I haven't met yet on Twitter face-to-face. -face. That is always something I really enjoy doing and just seeing people that I haven't seen for a year or six months. So it's kind of like everybody's collecting in each city each time and we make so many memories. It's amazing. Like the memories we make and we talk about the memories we had last year at the event. So seeing everybody is definitely one of my favorite things in the whole world. I love, I love all my adult industry friends and I love all of my childhood friends. So I'm lucky to have both worlds. That's badass. And I'm, oh. staying, in a I'm staying in a big house with like 16 other cam models this trip. We got like a big Airbnb house, and I'm pretty excited. It's going to be a great time. I've heard some really good things about Airbnb. Some of those houses you get to stay in are crazy. It's have beautiful. have so many cool things. Yeah, I can't wait to see it. It's right on the water. It's going to be gorgeous. So you were talking about toys. Is there anything that you, like, endorse or prefer or have a deal with or 
I have no toy deals, but I sell. I do have an online store that I sell all of the toys on, which is shaunalinaystore dot com. So basically, whatever toy you're looking for, it it should be on my site. <laughs> Guy okay. toys and and women toys. Okay, so um, you have like a distribution deal and just put it through your website, like with Evolved and all those people. Yep, yep. Basically, I sell. They handle all the shipping. I just have to make the sales for commission, and I don't really have to do anything. So I promote the products. I sell the products. I choose what the price is going to be. I have it set to the lowest ever, so I barely make commission, but my prices are pretty, pretty reasonable. Um, and I love it because I get kind of first choice on to see what coming out and what what companies are advertising and what new lines are coming out I get their advertisements so I kind of feel more in the know about it do you ever sell like used toys or auction anything <laughs> off that's been in your video no I actually have never never done that I mean I'm so connected to my toys I don't know if I could give one away <laughs> like I really love Can them you sell all one for like 500 bucks though you know I could I There's could. some weird I really people out there that like specific things. I prefer not to ship physical items because it's a lot of work to ship physical items. I do I do have a couple times a month you can win a fan package from me on my cans, um, on my shaunacans.com. And when I'm on, the highest tipper wins a fan package, which includes a, DVD, a signed DVD, signed magazine, signed 8x10, and some panties. And so I actually have two I need to send out right here. That's really the only way that someone can get physical orders from me right now is basically to win them by tipping the highest. And are they panties that you've worn or just like panties? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, can like okay. them either way. But I wear them and then I play with play in them and then I put them in a Ziploc and then I put them in the manila folder. Okay. So you do sell your essence. Yes. Very rarely, though, because you have to win it. Okay. You can't just buy it. So then with yeah, underwear as part of the package, do you have a favorite style of underwear? Yes. Um, my favorite are lace thongs. Like, those those are definitely my favorite to wear and to sell. And then I have them pick out what color. Nice. Some oranges what? and new black. <laughs> <laughs> What other kind of upsells or, like, you know, promotional activities do you do, um, you know, like that? Is there other than giveaways? Um, and, you know, you do the, uh, you do the uh, subcontracting for the toys. Um, you know, do you do anything else that's extra uh, on top of just, you know, the basic um, living in your room? Yeah, I, I make a lot of photo sets and a lot of clips. Like, my photo sets are something I've really been spending a lot of time with on lately because I have, like, 20 backdrops and I have a studio now. So I have just I just go up to my studio and I play and I take a photo set between 30 and 50 photos. Um, and then I have, like, 53 clips. So basically in my room we'll play a game and we'll do guess the number and it could be 1 through 50, and I'll pick a number. And the guys tip um, each number, and whoever tips the right number wins all of my stuff, all of my digital orders. That's really creative. Okay. Yeah, it works really well. I love I love it, and it gets me going because, like, somebody will be so close to the number, and I want to tell them what it is, and I can't. Um <laughs> So when they get close, I'll be like, okay, you're really warm if they've been trying and trying, and it's one of the last numbers on there. But it's a great income maker, um, but it's a lot of fun to play. And I try to do as much as I can, and I try to make as many sign-ups as possible. Basically, I, I, I love the affiliate program at Chatterbait. So my life, when I'm, not, when I'm always on my phone, I'm basically just trying to get sign-ups because they equal money in the long run. So are you live on your chatterbait right now as we're doing this interview? No, no. I never get on cam with my kids at home. So um, I, if they're either at school during the day or they are with my mom or their dad. Okay, word. 
Um, <laughs> so you 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 are very um, very different from our last guest. Very very wide contrast between uh, the Ninja Stars and you, for example. Uh, they are very secretive about where they are located, and you use your real name. You don't, you know, you say you're in a little town outside Cleveland, like, um, you know, very upfront, very public, very transparent. Um, have you ever had an issue with, like, stalkers or, you know, creepy people? No, I've never, in 12 years, I've never had an issue. The only issue I've had was not because I've released any info. I had a male guy, and on Sundays when the mail comes, it's not my regular mail lady, and I love my regular mail lady. She is amazing. She tells me the weather every day. I love her so much. But on Sundays, I get these random guys. And one day this guy comes, he drops me off a package, and then he sits in my driveway for about 10 minutes, and he leaves. And I just was like, that is so weird. Why is he sitting in my driveway? He comes back about 20 minutes later to say, I know where I recognized you from. Like, And that was a little weird to me. Like, dude, you're in your post office truck. You're probably not supposed to stop back by here. And it was just the weirdest thing, and he, like, wanted a hug. And that... That, to me, was a little awkward to me because I was like, well, crap, now this guy knows where I live. And, like, that was that was a little over the line for me. And I think that was the only time I ever, like, got worried. But it had nothing to do with me actually releasing information, um, like, on about where I am and what my name is. That was literally just random that he recognized me while dropping off a package. Man, you are... I want to say you're a blessed individual, but I don't want to say that to you. You must be God's favorite atheist. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like a person just, you know, based on love and family and character and community, I feel like we could accomplish a lot of things without religion um, or a supernatural being. Um, I feel like if I ever get really super rich, which I am not rich, I just make a lot per hour so I don't have to work very much. But I, I'm not wealthy or anything. I just live comfortably without having to work. But if I ever get rich, I really want to open up a community center that is based on love and encouragement and motivation um, without, you know, a secular a secular community building is what I really would love to do if I ever hit it big. That's awesome. Um, so, uh, oh, man, I lost the question that was on the tip of my tongue. Sorry, I have been at a wedding the last week in uh, in Ann Arbor, and I'm running about eight hours of sleep for the last week, so I'm a little spacey right now. Um, oh, the question I was going to ask, um, you know, you say you're really into toys, do you have the desire to ever, you know, get your own line, or is that something that you're working towards, um, you know, trying to make, like, a Sean Olenae line through another company or your own? Yeah, I might do that. It would depend what my cutback would be, though. Um, I don't know if they would give me what I would want, but I would think about it. Um, but I would think about it. It's just not in the plays yet. But maybe, maybe in the future, maybe in the next few years, I could start working on that. Right now, I'm working on financial goals right now. Um, I really want, I rent a house right now for my family. And my main goal from being in the adult industry is to have a house worth like $175,000 up here, which is a very nice house for the area I live in. And I want to have it all paid off and then have like another $100,000 in the bank. So those right now I'm focused on more financial goals than more building my brand. So I feel like I've built my brand so much and I haven't really focused on financial things and now I'm just so focused on what I need to accomplish for myself. Word. So in your in your public experiences and you know, maybe at expos or anything what is like the the you know craziest party or experience that you have gotten to uh, that you've gotten to experience uh doing what you do? Have you ever been taken out to any crazy like five star clubs or restaurants or uh partied with rock stars or anything along those lines? Uh yeah, that's happened a lot. I mean, us cam models we have a tendency to go towards five star restaurants. Um 
I don't know why. We just really like to kind of show off that we can afford expensive dinners. Um, so that's normal for us. Um, I have a lot of athletes that contact me um, when it comes, and I do have some musicians as well. I don't really go out with, I really don't go out with um, big name people. I just, I'm more into like normal people from home. Um, but there have been pictures where I'll be at a party and my friends are like, do you know who's sitting right in front of you? And I'm like, no, I have no idea who that is. And Because I'm in my own little world. Um, like a celebrity could walk right by me and I would have no idea because I'm literally just in my own world. I've never paid attention to that even in LA um, of seeing who I could go out to dinner with. And I know a lot of girls play that up. Um, but I just, I don't know. I think I'm just more of an Ohio girl that really doesn't care about that. But I do love five star dinner. <laughs> <laughs> Like, what's your favorite five-star dinner? Are you, like, a beef person, a fish person? A... I'm totally, like, a surf and surf person, definitely. I totally love steaks, um, fillets, definitely. Um, I don't like too fancy. Like, I don't like when things get a little fancy and they start combining um, things that taste funny. I definitely like just steak, a really great steak dinner. So is the, we got about about fifteen minutes left. Is there anything that you'd like to talk about? Anything that um, that you uh, 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 were wanting to be asked that you didn't get asked? Anything that you want to promote? Uh, anything? Um, yeah, yeah, I definitely. Anything just, extra, Dad? I just want to promote my my cam shows. Um, I really invite everybody to go follow me at shawnacams.com, or you can go to my Twitter to follow my links over at Shauna Lene Show. Um, I really invite everybody to follow me and turn on their email updates because when I get on, I send out a notification, and um, I'm trying to get up to 5,000 followers because I'm still actually new to Chatterbait. I switched from a different site recently that was having tech issues. Um, but I absolutely yeah. love Chatterbait, so I'm going to give them a shout-out for a couple minutes. <clears throat> um, one thing I do regret in my career over the past three years is not switching to Chatterbait sooner. The If you compare, because I'm always into stats and data, um, when you compare traffic worldwide of all of the campsites, Chatterbait is basically at the top. Um, and you could tell when you go to rooms, they have 11, sometimes 11,000 followers or 11,000 viewers in the room. There was one time I had 11,000 people watching me, and I thought that was crazy because that is impossible on other sites. So if anyone's thinking of becoming a cam model, I definitely recommend Chatterbait because if you want to really promote your brand and build a base, Chatterbait is a great way to do that. Um, I really regret not starting there sooner because, one, I'm making way more money per hour on Chatterbait. Two, I have the extra promotion. And three, Chatterbait just loves to promote at the expos and at events. And they really make their brand seen. And they've grown so much over the past three years. And I kind of nudged them off at first because they, were, they weren't as big as they are now. And I wish I would have taken them more seriously. Um, other, and if anybody has any questions about camming and they want to start, they can always DM me on Twitter. I answer a lot of stuff, as long as it's not creepy or a penis picture. But if you send me a penis picture, I will report you and your account will get locked. Fair warning. Um, but if you have questions about how to get started, I can definitely help you out. Um, as long as you sign up with my link, uh, I will help out for sure. And definitely just go to shawnacamps.com and follow me. You can ask me questions. And definitely check out my shows because you might like them, and I hope hope you do. So you said if somebody sends you a dick pic, they automatically get banned. Have you ever gotten sent a dick pic that you're like, yeah, okay, you know, we're going to let that one slide? Nope. No. See, it's never fucking appropriate, people. They're never, they're never the pretty one. 
they're, they're never they're never the pretty ones is all I'm saying. It's like always the weirdest looking ones. Like the pretty ones are just kept wrapped up by pretty girlfriends who don't allow them to be shared. But it's and that's understandable. The ones I always see, I don't I don't wanna see. I please don't. <sighs> Well, I think we have about 10 minutes left. Unknown factor, are you still around? Where are you at? No, man. It's unknown. I don't know. What do you want? I want to know if you want to put this woman in a box. Really? On this show? Is that show? something we can do on this show? Yeah, you should do that it on seems, this show. That seems really, really, really fucking rude. I mean, <laughs> and, and Chuckles isn't here either, bro. Like, I don't, can you uh, bring the level of violence necessary? Because I know my wife yeah. can't. Look, no, nah, look, Shauna, I'm sorry. Look, if he wants me to do this, that's some terrible, 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 fucking terrible. Let me let me reiterate one more time. Terrible motherfucking <laughs> shit, right? I, I mean, it is. Terrible. You know, it is. That's just, that's the motherfucking truth of it. You know what? Put Call Chuckles. Put her on the eye. Call Chuckles. <laughs> No. Call, call Chuck. Uh, call Chuck. This has been a lot of fun. Call him. Well, hey, call him. Well, it is it is kind of terrible, but at the same time, you're probably the most morally sound guest we've ever had. Not only on this show, but on No Flex Given in general. <laughs> and we general, I mean, most. We have a lot of fucked up people that get interviewed on No Fucks Given Radio. <laughs> Um, like, a lot. Uh, we have a lot of fucked up hosts on No Fucks Given Radio. <laughs> this has been the tamest interview ever. And I know Factor and Chuckles have their little box thing that they like to do. And generally, it's, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty, I think it would be a lot different, um, addition to their collection of people in boxes. Because they have about 150 people in boxes. Oh goodness! <laughs> it's, there's we've we've shipped quite a few individuals off, Shana. It's just kind of what we do, you know. It's not. Here. <laughs> uh, there's, there's my yeah, and most of the people that have made it to this island um, generally uh, uh, belong there. Um, you have never had a stalker. Uh, so I want to know what would happen. Where's Chuckles? Working on it. Uh, weird. So, um, hey, uh, Guardian Angel, real quick. Hey, look, wait, yeah. don't, like, you fucking brought that up out of nowhere, what? motherfucker. If you'd told me, like, a half hour ago, I'd have had that shit I planned. Like, I didn't know you needed Chuckles for it. I thought it was a you thing. Um... I thought you were going to be like, oh, yeah, let's do that, and then go into it. I didn't think well, we were going to be calling in somebody. No, wait, no, wait, no, 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 no. Fuck both of y'all, right? That's at least a two-person bit. And I need someone, and I need someone, like, I said versus if he could do it, but do you, can you bring the level of violence necessary was my question. Because that no, was, you know. No, like, you definitely need chuckles. But see? while we're waiting on chuckles to show up, um, I want to throw a plug to our new host, Guardian Angel, real quick. And where can we find you? Websites, social media, everything like that. Who are you? What do you do, real quick? Well, as you said, my name is Guardian Angel, and I am one half of a husband, wife, hip hop duo. Uh, we go by RIP Soldiers. You can find us on our website at RIPSoldiersMusic.com, and pretty much on any social media is RIP Soldiers or RIP Soldiers Music. But Everything is up on the website. Um, I stick mostly to Facebook right now, but if anyone ever messages or emails, you will be getting me. So I take care of all that business. <laughs> so that's actually my full-time job now is working on our marketing and promotions for the business. We're in the process of setting up a parody show and toy drive for hopefully the beginning of December. We're working working that out right now, so I'll be getting that set up here soon. Um, yeah, I don't know. Awesome. What, awesome. I'm not sure what people would like to know about me. <laughs> uh, weird. Well, is Chuckles in the house? Is he coming? Are we doing this? 
Uh, see, he's man. See, man, and I, he's he's gonna yeah. man. I don't I don't look. I need hold on, man. You know what? Fucking try and call Will. My wife's like, no, fuck you. I ain't trying to call no more people. Uh, because <laughs> I know I know what will. Uh, buy me five minutes, asshole. <laughs> no, it's all good. Fucking, I, I, I mean, uh, uh, I'm fucking tired, bro. My energy is dying. What? No, 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 here, I got, I'll buy myself five minutes, humanity. Five buy yourself shit. five minutes for I'll me. Fucking, I'll do it my damn self, man. Whatever. Because, <laughs> you know, one thing, Sean, and no one's brought up is, holy shit, you've won quite a few awards. Like, how is that? And just going into all that, like, just the process. Hey, there we go. Yeah. Let's talk uh, about that. Thanks for saving the show, PD. I I don't know. I have lost count since the beginning of last hmm. year. Um, I don't. I think it's been about six, like sixteen awards since the beginning of two thousand sixteen. Um, I've actually had to take a break because I was winning so much that I felt like it was a little unfair. So I st I've stepped away for six months from contests. Um, but I will be resuming contests in the next few weeks, so please go to my Twitter because I'm going to need some votes. Um, I had spent 12 to 16 hours a day campaigning for votes every single day for about a year and a half. Um, it was basically my full-time job, um, and it stressed me out because I would count, I count votes. Um, I'd be so afraid of losing that it really started taking over I didn't really care about winning. I just wanted the credibility to show to companies like, hey, I know how to market. I know how to bring in traffic. So that was really important to me, not necessarily the awards, but I wanted to show everybody I know how to bring in traffic and I know how to make people quick links. So I've been very proud of the awards. I don't ever talk about them much. Um, some awards have been fan votes. Some awards have been given to me, like the Sphinx Things Webcam Girl of the Year. That was a big one for me because I had nothing to do with getting the award. It was chosen, and I was I was chosen for it, which was so important to me. Um, the Exes Miami Award for Best Movie slash Cam Star was also extremely important to me. I had put together a 60-day marketing campaign, and... It was, it was amazing. I had built a team, and about six of the eight people I had on my team won an award. Um, and they're a lot of fun, and I had, won, I had won a lot of money last year from the contest. So I took my family to Disney World, um, my two kids and my mom. We went and had a five-star luxury Disney World vacation, um, all thanks to the contest that I won. So it, was, it gave me memories that... I'll never be able to forget. I'm just so thankful for them. So what's the process of entering contests or nominating, getting nominated for a contest or, you know what I mean? Um, how, how, how do you end up winning an award? What's the, what's the process that happens before you win, you know? Um, basically, there's usually a pre nom process. So they get together – they get together, figure out what awards they want um, to put together, and everybody pre noms their favorite model. And then who they pick about 10, 20, depends on which award show it is. They'll pick between 8 and 20 models per category for the finalists. And then from there, people can vote for their specific model that they want to win. And then... Yeah, and some, some of them are also paid votes where fans can um, buy a vote for a dollar, and um, which those are the most stressful that I try to stay away from because anything can happen last minute. Or I thought I was going to win an award, and then last minute somebody spends a thousand dollars on votes, and I lose my I lost what I thought I was going to win. So I really try to stay away from those ones. Yeah. Well, that so is all awesome. Shelsea, do you have anything you want to add? No, I'm over here in NyQuil coma. <laughs> You're over here in your NyQuil... Uh, oh, in your NyQuil coma? Yeah, I mean, we both I feel that. NyQuil. 
She's being a pussy about it, though. I'm fine. I don't know what the fuck the problem is. Yeah, no, I've been sick for the last couple of weeks, too. Um, we're, well, I think that's our show today. Uh, thank you, Sean and A, for being our guests. Oh, no. Uh, we really appreciate it. Look, you were look, awesome. Look, fuck it. I'll do it by my goddamn self, then. Fuck it. Don't <laughs> nobody want to fucking jump in. Oh, what? Oh, what? My wife. Oh, the wife's like walking away. What are you still calling for, humanity? Can you help me with it? Let's do it. I will do my best. All right. I will do he, my best. I don't know if he can come horrific enough. Shauna, I'll be real honest. This is normally a segment you would only suffer on the No Fucks Given Hour as well. I would also normally have a headhunter with me to assist, but he's not here. So, you know, but humanity. This is my first box. Yeah, humanity called for the box. So, I ain't even got the shit set up to properly, like. Look, I'm gonna pop this. I'm gonna pop this shit up. You ain't, I ain't got my fucking shit set up properly to switch to the live feed for the box, man. I wasn't all prepped for that, you jackass. You caught me <laughs> off guard. But yeah, what we're gonna do, Sean, is I'm gonna shove you in a box. Yeah, and see, I know, I know what size you is, cause you got lots of videos. Go check out those videos, ladies and gentlemen. They're entertaining. But that's besides the point. Neither here nor there, right? What I'm gonna do is shove you in this box and ship you off. Yeah, where I'm shipping you, this little island. It's ten by ten. One palm tree, awesome. one coconut on it. That's it. I'll Stop take it. it. Yeah. I'll take it. Okay. Oh, it's not as good as nice you get there. As long as it's warm and I can get a tan. And it's nice and I'll warm. Figure, I'll figure it out. It's cool. You're, okay. You not only are you that. going to get a tan, you're going to get skin cancer. Really? Yeah, well, if there's a Let palm just... tree, I'll just, you know, I got some shade. I'll be fine. I'll, I'll monitor no. my time. You will not be fine, Shana. Shana. With the sun you and the shadow. Fine. You will not be fine, right? Because I want you to know. I'll be fine. You, no, no, no. You know, I have a I'm motto in life. Fine. I have a motto, and my motto is make it work. So no matter what situation I'm in, I will make it work. Oh, God. Man, I fucking feel like I'm really going to need a headhunter with me for this one. I just got a point. I like her spine. I feel like I might need Noose with me for this one, or maybe Will. I don't know. They came up with fucked options, but I don't know. We're just going to see how fucked up it can get, because Shauna... Right, here's the thing. The water surrounding this island, well, you just don't want to fuck around with that water. That water is I will terrible. do some I will do some research before I go. Oh well no, you just you just want to stay out of it because it's death. That's what it is. This woman's positivity might be too much. Yeah, I know, dude. That's what I'm saying. Like she's so positive, I feel like I need the fucking head on. She's like, I got this, it's all good. I'm like, no, the water is death. Like, the water will eat you like fucking the blob. You've you seen that old school movie, The Blob, right? Yes, I will try yeah, my that's, best. That's, I'll, so I'll just, try my best. You best stay out the water, Shauna. Cause if you, but you can always go into the water. I just want you to know this. If you ever truly are like, you know what, fuck it. I cannot put up with the shit that they have put before me. I think I'm just going to go ahead and walk into this. You always have that as an option. But with your positive ass, I think it's really going to be difficult to get to there. <laughs> Right. So that's so gonna... funny because my friends always say I'm too trusting and positive because sometimes it does work against me. All right. Well, it probably will in this circumstance, but I am the unknown factor. I gave you fair warning in my name and nothing more. Right. So what well, we're going to start you with, though, like I see you stuck on this island. Right. Right. Oh. Uh. I apologize. Give me one second. He's emptying you a box. Okay. All of our boxes were full. <laughs> so he has to go. There's a little bit of an excavation process here. I apologize. Um, no. All right. all kinds of now we have an empty yeah. box. Yeah, no, yeah. So now you're on the island, right? So here's the thing, all right? You got, you got a little bit of entertainment. I ain't just going to leave you to absolutely nothing. So suddenly you got a big-ass screen pops above you, all right? Now one of three things is going to play on this screen, Shauna. Now the first is, ooh, man, there's a uh, guy with her positive ass. Humanity, I don't even know where to start to make sure, like, I feel like she's just going to be cool with almost anything. Like, because that's, that's way too good. I know that for a fact. But, I don't know, Bruce Jenner giving birth for the first time. I feel like that's pretty goddamn terrible. Yeah, so that's your first option. Humanity, what's your second? Your second option. 
this is not the box I remember doing when I did this show. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, your second option is uh, the scene where that one artist cut off his fucking ear uh, right before he sent it in the package and mailed it to whoever that bitch was that made him cut off his ear. Van Gogh, that guy. Watching okay. Van Gogh cut off his own fucking ear. Again and again and again. Guardian Angel, come up with a third one. Third, a third horrific scene. Hmm. Maybe a slow disintegration of the human body. Oh. Oh, that'd what be are you gross. watching, Shauna? Very, very slow. I have to pick one. Yeah. Take that Bruce Jenner giving birth because I would be very interested in learning how that would happen. So All it's right. probably like I need to find out how this is happening. So just to let I'm you not gonna lie. I would watch Bruce Jenner giving birth if I wasn't forced <laughs> to. Just, like I'm, I'm, I'm with you on that. All right, all right. I, so just to let you know, this is the 24 hour birth. Through the urethra, all right. As far as you know, so that's I don't even. All right, and that's your. So you're a <laughs> for a week straight. Oh, dear Lord. So you're gonna get to experience this video in its entirety seven times, right? Are you okay with that? Uh, well, if I was watching it to learn how the hell this was happening, I would probably at least need a couple times to think about what I'm seeing. No, I, I would seeing... make it work. I would. Somehow, but compared to the other two, I think that would be the best option. Yeah. I might get a little grossed out at, like, the fourth time for sure. Hmm. I've seen some messed up things in the adult industry, so, so I think I so can handle it. She's fine with Death, the though, and right. being hurt, like, anything with blood or medical or anything, I'm not good with that stuff. I could never be a nurse. Like, kudos to all the nurses out there. And doctors, because I can't do that. But Bruce Jenner giving birth is totally worth it. I would be interested. She made it past week. In the name of science. Hmm. In the name of science, no less. She's watching Bruce Jenner give birth. Yeah, for science. Exactly. (laughs) Week one's over. You've had to fucking torture yourself watching that for a week, right? And now Um, that's good. I might have nightmares. All right, well, here's the thing. Now you have to deliver. Bruce Jitters, first baby. Are you okay with this? Deliver a baby? Bruce Jitters. I mean, I, I see, I don't know if I could ever deliver a baby because I would feel like if something went wrong, like, like that's a big responsibility. You have like, to. Oh my goodness. But I, I could do it. I could do it. It'd be a cute baby, I hope. You know, be like, oh no, my God. It's not. Oh. It's not a cute not, baby. It's not. It's not a cute baby. Like, this motherfucker <laughs> is, like, the definition of not a cute baby. Like, And you've got to deliver it seven different times. I want you to keep that in mind. Because every time the baby comes out, for some reason it just gets sucked back in there real quick. And then you have to re-deliver it. All right? I might, you know what? I might be a pro by the time seven times happens. <laughs> I would probably be a professional. After It'd that. be a really good experience for an intern, that's for sure. Yeah. I, think I would have seven, seven times the experience. I might figure out by the third oh, time how to make that baby stay out. Damn it. <laughs> Dude, she's it's too positive. It's like good in everything. It's like trying to kill Supreme all over again. I swear to God. It is. Beautiful. It's just like trying to kill Supreme. Right? So I'm going to get more brutal with you than I did with Supreme because I didn't figure it out until later on that it was possible to go there. Right? Um, damn, though, with what you said earlier, I don't even know if this one will work. Fuck. So, uh, oh, that's that's really, oh, God, that's mean, but I could take her out. 
this has evolved so much. When you had me do the box thing, you asked me what three things would I or what three uh, what three CDs would I listen oh, no, to you try if to I kill was people now. stranded on an island. You try to, I I obviously haven't listened to the box anymore because I thought you were just gonna ask her, hey Sean, if you were stranded on a fucking island and oh. could only have three CDs with you, oh, what would you take? This is what I was expecting. He's like over here getting <laughs> fucking <is> sadistic. <laughs> Like, yeah. I know, dude. I mean, this is not the trap I was trying to set you up for. He's like trying to call this motherfuckers in. And... That's, yeah, because I needed fucking my. I needed the headhunter's assistance because it's the headhunter's fault that it turned to murder. Now, I'm down with the fact that it turned to murder because I am the unknown factor. So, man. Uh, oh, that's such a. I was point. just getting exhausted on no sleep, and I want her to say, like, you know. Toby Keith, Michael Buble, and whatever other artist she listens to. I mean, that's what I assume Jesse you listen McCartney, to. Taylor Swift, and Demi Lovato. <laughs> okay, there we go. Like, he was looking for musical selections. I'm looking to kill her and then send her to hell. Yeah, I w this is a very innocent <laughs> proposition that I knew he was cutting out and putting on a separate part of the show. So, hey, why not do one with the porn star? No, let's fucking murder this bitch because she's been so nice to us. Like, Dude, I murdered Mastermind, all right? You and I fucking I did kind of feel bad about that one. Shout out to Mastermind for coming under No Fucks Giving Our Last What Friday? Yeah, Friday. Yeah, it was a dope ass interview. But I ain't done. I'm gonna murder this one because fucking okay. I don't start a box and not finish it. And Shauna, I just have to say before I go to the next place I go, I'm sorry. But the point of this exercise is to get you to run into the water. So I'm gonna make you run into the water because it's what I do. <laughs> Yeah, oh, well, but I'm not you, running into the water. But you can try. Because do you know what I have? I, I guess I guess we're going to do this for real now because no. fuck yeah, it. No. Oh no! Well, yeah, kind of, but with, in her situation, she told her earlier, really I should. My wife just waved that one off. She's like, babe, no. She's like, don't throw that pitch. That pitch is like, <laughs> that's your that's your screw fast curveball all at once. Don't throw it. It's way too rude. She really told me not to throw that pitch. I'd be a so bitch. Like, babe, really? You're making me not. You you're telling me not to throw that pitch. It's too mean of a pitch. Really? I mean, because she's been a nice guest. She has, She ain't been nothing but sweet, Shauna. That's definitely truth. And you, know, you ain't had, you've been had to deal with my psychotic ass this whole time, and I'm a whole another motherfucking part of the equation. That's the truth. Um, man. I, I opened I, a door that I don't know how to close. I, I had that pitch so ready, babe. Like, it was like, it was wound up. I was like, uh, giving that nice little spin on it. I had the sidewinder ready to fucking go, and then she just waved it off like, no. Like, just shaking her head like, no. No. Do not. You don't, you don't fucking throw that one. I don't, don't you dare. Like, this is bullshit. <laughs> You're on my program, bitch. Only because I'm not sure it would work. Look, <laughs> look, for real, if this was the no fucks given hour, god damn it, I would so throw that pitch, Shauna, and there would be no saving you. I'm sorry, but, but this ain't my show, so whatever. I'll fuck. Hey, humanity, should I throw that pitch? I'm interested. She said do it. Fucking do it. Uh, Shauna said she's interested. Really? Now I guarantee Shauna, I'm going to make you run to the water with this. I don't know. Oh, she said she right. no. No. Hey, hey, we're we're stepping into the octagon. Shake hands, right. people. Right. We're all going to be friends well, after this. You know, Shauna, you're going, going friends, fucking down, girl. <laughs> Well, listen, I kill people for a Good living, time. motherfuckers. What I do, right? That's the case. So, throw right, the pitch. Now, now, throw the pitch, all that, all that shit's gone, right? You just got that island, that palm tree, and that coconut, and then suddenly a hologram appears, right? Of that dude okay. that you got a serious fucking problem with, and all he's doing is running his mouth, and you can't do nothing to him. You can't kick him. You can't. Every time you try, you just you just go through him, and he's just blah 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 blah. It won't stop. Just right. like you, like you wish you could just shove a fucking knife in his forehead, but I mean, it, you couldn't even do it because he's not tangible, right? So he's right. just running his mouth. A week. Are you okay? 
I'd probably be cool with it. I have people saying annoying things to me on like Twitter like all day long. So but, but I'm pretty a, much used no, to people saying I, like really I, annoying I, things to me. I think you're lying. But Shauna, Shauna, that's in your face, like and it's just constantly in your face. In a ten by ten like it's always well, gonna be in your face. I would play a game with it. Like I would just like throw the coconut I would just like throw the sand in this like hologram face or I would totally make a game out of it. I mean, it would just literally keep me occupied and entertained. Did you just grab my coconut? Did you just grab my coconut? I did. I don't like coconut. You just I, I think coconut, coconut is a smell. <laughs> it's not a taste. <laughs> it is but, a smell. But, like but, I hate no. taste of coconut, so I'd probably Shana, just throw that in the water you just anyways. Grabbed my coconut, right? Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. Yep. Your coconut's gone. No. You're gone, because that's what my coconut does. Now you're part of the coconuts, too, right? Because that's the deal with the coconut. Yeah, it's not this there for no purpose. How the fuck do you think I power this island, right? Occasionally, there have to be sacrifices. And the sacrifices, well, for some weird-ass reason, they're to the coconut. Don't ask why, don't ask how, I am the unknown <laughs> factor. But, now you're dead, goddammit, and finally, shit, I was, like, what the fuck was this shit, humanity? And you thought I was going to be nice, too, and what the fuck is that? And I still ain't done, right? Because, you know... I think you're making up the rules as you go. I am the unknown factor, but actually, no. As far as the rule of the coconut, you can go and check on past episodes. That rule applies and has for several Okay. <laughs> All right, if there's proof, if there's proof, okay. Coconut, look, I'll, I'll even go as far as to say, like, and I'll put it out and fucking for anybody that listens, occasionally the coconut will move to the bottom of the tree because the coconut has not been fed in quite some time. Um, it just hasn't had to do that for a long time because people keep fucking playing with it and it gets fed. So whatever. But now you're in hell. Yeah, I shot it because that's what the fuck happens. You know, all right. Well, that's where all know. the cool people are. I'm cool with it. Yeah. I'm <laughs> all right. Dude, fine. Yeah, I'll just go down there and party my, yeah. my eternal life away. It's fine. <laughs> Cool. Yeah, we covered that in the beginning of the interview. She's already yeah. volunteering for hey, that. For real, but this is no fucks given. We definitely like to give options. You know what I'm saying? It's not just going to send you a regular ass old hell. All right? going to give you a little bit of motherfucking selection. Yeah. You ever seen that? Pretty, there's more than pretty... one hell now. Oh, yeah. Well, isn't there really? I mean, really, if you read all the mythological books, there's far than more than one hell. But that's neither here nor there. For your first hell, though, Shauna, yeah, especially since in the nature and the, you know, uh, What's well, the celebration of Halloween? Huh? Well, we'll give you a little trifecta. Michael Myers, Freddy Krueger, yeah, and Jason Voorhees. And man, Shauna, they all got a thing for you. And, and they like snuff too. So it's not going to be pleasant. And it's just going to suck. And yeah, that's your first hell. Humanity, give me something terrible. Give me something. Uh, your personal hell. Is getting all of your fingernails removed with the cheapest Walmart tweezers you can buy. I'm talking like oh, 38 that's... cent Walmart tweezers, just digging and pulling your fingernails out of your body. That might not be fun because I learned in cosmetology school when I went for one of the two years that that is like the worst pain you can feel. That's why I brought it up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I might not be okay with that. So, you know, so I'm like a crybaby when I break my yeah. nail. Oh, but you still got a couple more options. Well, <laughs> damn, humanity, that's kind of like we do three over here, but I never, we've never had anybody go straight for like fingernail torture, you fucking <laughs> asshole. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I thought I, was, I, th I, thought Bro, I wasn't fucked up you? enough for this factor. Hey, no, dude, but that's not, but that's like, fu what the fuck ever. Guardian Angel, give us a third one. How about. Eternity in a constant state of needing to go where your family is, but the tattoo, the tattoo being done on your rib cage, never ends. <laughs> we all know what Guardian Angel's personal hell is. <laughs> that's a very. Mm, I don't very, know. <laughs> that's very very like on point. Getting you have to go where your family is, but you're getting tattooed on your rib cage, and they won't finish. That's really I'm so skinny. Specific, I can't do tattoos. Like, like so for, it's all into my bones. Like, ouch. I am not good yeah. with tattoos. And this is your rib cage. So this is like right the the worst bony place you can get tattooed. This is happening yeah. for eternity, and you're anxious because you have to make it to Thanksgiving dinner. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that that would suck. 
Rosh What's the third option? What do you mean, what's the third option? What are you fucking... Oh, having to get gang banged by uh, Michael and Freddie and Jason. That's right. Snuff-wise, man, because that's a snuff film with Un3, let's face it, always. Yeah, Shoshana. What do you That'd be an interesting eternity? story to tell. Wouldn't it, though? But you don't get to tell it. You just get to repeat it for all eternity. <laughs> That's what sucks, Shauna, just so you know. Yeah. You, you do not get to sell the gangbang on the internet. You do not profit from Darn it. it. This is the it. bad kind of gangbang. Hmm. I could, like, pick one of those. Yeah. Like, yeah, can I just what? get my fingernails torn off once and that's it? Oh, Shauna, all I have to say is no choice is a choice as well. And the time, the time is, well, the time is short before you need to make one. Um, I don't know, just rip my nails off. Just do it. Just rip my nails Damn. off. Damn. Well, then I'll be on my way. I'll, I'll go grow back. Hopefully. No, this is hell. No, you're just, this is all that's happening. Is you're just getting your nails ripped off again and again and again. That's just, this is repeat. Yeah, none of this ever, ever yeah. stops. This is hell. Get your nails this ripped off again and again and again. Hey, Anxiously get tattooed on your rib cage again and again and again, or just get this horrible three monster train ran on you. Hey, look! At least she. I, I quit. I can't take it. <laughs> Plus, my daughter. Keeps, look, Sean, my daughter keeps think... writing me letters that she's mad at me because I've been on the phone for so long. Uh, <laughs> oh hell no well you're in hell now this is over hey at least you picked one though because i promise shawnee you didn't want to not make a choice some people do that and they really really do end up regretting it but that's besides <laughs> point, ladies and gentlemen this you are smart three, six, one, i only got a cop oh. out because a violet has wrote me like probably like 10 letters asking me how much longer i'm gonna be on the phone and oh. then she, she wrote me a letter that says she's gonna be mad at me if i don't get off the phone soon we, got we you feel you. Before, you want to get before you get out of here? What was that? You got any shout outs you want to give before you get out of here? Most definitely. I want to thank you guys for having me on. It's been a great um, time. I love you guys so much. And please follow me, shawnacams.com, and follow my Chatterbait profile. Make sure you follow me to get notifications when I sign on. On set, follow me on Twitter, Shauna Lene Show, Facebook, Shauna Lene Show, and Instagram, Shauna Lene Show. And make sure you click my links. And I have a lot of pictures on my Twitter you guys can go look at. Also, be sure to follow No Fucks Given Radio, Three Chicks, One Prick, Versus Humanity, and Rest in Peace Soldiers, as well as Unknown Factor on Facebook. My name is Versus Humanity. Fucking, there's Shell Shell, Guardian Angel, and of course, our guest, Shauna Lene. We're signing off tonight, but be with us the next time we do it because I'm going to go book somebody with some crazy-ass fetishes. Yeah, we're not just going to do fucking what Shell Shell likes to watch anymore. It's going to be I, – I, I'm getting into this. So we will see you all later, and, uh, yeah, the show's not live anymore. Or is it? Have a good night, y'all.